and welcome to Quilting with Dawn, episode three. This is the episode where I build the strip sets. Just having a little bit of fun with a green screen, so thought with my Hawaiian shirts, I might give you a bit of uh, cool, entertaining background. <laughs> but that will be distracting. So before we go any further, I've readjusted my quilting studio. So check this out. All right, here is my new and improved studio. What I've done is turn the uh, table around 90 degrees because I wanted more space. So now the dining room table is expanded and I've got everything I want, including, check it out. Well, I have had that extra late, but what I've got is a massive design wall over nine feet wide, well, let's say nine feet wide by eight feet tall-ish. So now, of course, you'd expect the uh, sewing area with trusty sewing machine, cutting mats, tools, ironing board, iron, and so on. So yeah, this is my new and approved studio. All right, you get an idea for it now. I've had to add some lighting, get creative with my arrangement, but I did have to, after turning the table 90 degrees, I've got much more space. And of course, making the table wider to its full eight person dining room table width is a game changer. I've got so much space now here to sew, to adjust, and the quilting behind, wall behind me, which I'll get show you in a second, is gold. So now according to the good book, and what I'm doing with this episode, is going to be building the strip sets. And the process for doing that is rather straightforward, but there are some good techniques I'll explain as I go along. First, is you prepare the fabric. Second, you cut the two and a half inch strips along from uh, selvage edge to selvage edge. So you get with the fabric strips of two and a half inches of each color. 20 of the blues, 20 of the orange, yellow, reds, and blacks. Then the third thing you do is assemble those sets by joining together the 20 pieces of fabric. For preparing the fabric, which I'm going to do next, is simply ironing it. I've got my stack of fabric here, all 20 blues. Uh, number one is on top. So the trick is to iron the fabric. And I think some of the pieces are gonna be way more than I need. Because my math says I need, for the blues, a total of eight strip sets. In other words, eight pieces of fabric, selvage to selvage. Eight times two and a half is 20. So I need 20 inches of fabric. So, looks like I got that here. And I'll start ironing. Hmm, this fabric has a little bit of a smell to it. Carolyn notices this all right away usually. Older fabric, I'm sure there's a physical reason for it, but older fabric always seems to develop a bit of this funk. Couldn't tell you why, it just does. Finish all the blues. Worked out pretty well. I've got a stack over here. And now I'll do the reds. So far, so good. All ironed. Blues, yellow, oranges, reds. And I was, I was going through this. I really came across some fabrics that I, did, that I really like. Let me show you. One of the first ones is, that's actually this one. I love the pattern. And there's another one that's sparkly. Oh, the one right before it. This one, really like that. There is some neat other patterns. I like this one. It's got the neat turquoise color and so really like those. Let's see if I can find another one. Now those are the ones that stood out for me. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. This is one of the ones I got at Fabricland. I love this swirly pattern. I got that in the oranges and yellows too. Okay, so. Let me just show you the couple of the yellows. This is one of the yellows I actually pulled from my lap kitty's quilt. It's that bright, bright yellow. Wonderful. And then, look at that. They've got the same swirly color here. Uh, that that uh, 
it was with on the blues. <laughs> Looks like I'll have to re-iron these if I'm not careful uh, with my showing you. Now I can fix that. I can fix that. What else did I really like? Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. And then I got this one. This is one of the ones from Vista Boxes. Yeah. And as is the one right behind it, here. And what else did I really like? Oh, this one's fun. This one looks like, it is, is red. Oop, I'll bring it up here. It's red maple leaves. Oh, that's fun. Another one of those swirly patterns. This to me, one of the defining patterns of, of the, of the, of our Jello. Love them. And the reds are, rest of reds are pretty cool, but I don't have to, I'm not going to highlight those. So there you have it. I am now at step two of making the strip sets, and that is to start cutting fabric. I went back to my reference math sheet to say how much fabric and how many strips and specifically I'm going to cut, because that's now is when I need to know. I need to cut only six strips of colors 16 through 20. I need seven strips of co colors 11 through 15, and I need the full eight strips of colors 1 through 10. So I'm going to use the good book from Arlene Wright, who I've learned recently has, unfortunately she's passed away, uh, but I'm sure her books are still out there. I'm hoping they are. Anyway, so what I've got in front of me here is, good, is fabric number one that I take off my pile over here. So you true it up, then you flip it and you cut your, in this case, two and a half inch strips. So I'm gonna do the first one and then I won't subject you to the rest. I'll just give you updates on how it goes. So, uh, right, I have, I love these rulers. Carolyn has a few of them. They're nice for me. I like them because they're nice and bright. They're yellow. And so they, the numbers show up very easily for me with my mild color vision issues, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm also going to check to see how that looks 90 degree wise at the top. It looks pretty good. And then you trim off the extra fabric on the right hand side. And not only is that a good thing to do to true it up, but this little extra bit of fabric I can then use as part of my color chart. I'm gonna take all these extra little bits of fabric, not too big, and I'm gonna put them on a piece of paper, and that's gonna be my, also my color reference for strips one through 20. And then what you do, this is your good edge, but I'm right-handed. So, uh, well, I'm gonna be cutting with my right hand. What that means then to use the ruler property, I gotta flip the fabric. So I do that, keeping uh, my nice line nice and true. And I start cutting two and a half inch strips. Then you mark your two and a half inch on the ruler. Uh, yeah, that looks good. One, two and a half. Check. There's one. How do we do? There's one. Just happened. Uh, I've cut four colors so far. Colors one through four. Good. Good thing is I discovered I like cutting with my left hand. So instead of doing the truing cut on the right hand side, then flipping the fabric and working from the other side, like I did for the first one. Now I true with my left hand. Therefore, the fabric doesn't have to shift at all. Don't have to flip it. Just keeps things better lined up. That's the good thing. Bad thing. It turns out I wasn't careful enough when I measured out my fabric. Um, I needed eight strips of color number three. I got seven and maybe a half. I, uh, <laughs> so Carolyn right now is on the, uh, on the interweb <laughs> seeing if that fabric is even available. It's from Wilmington. Uh, who knows? If it is, great. If it isn't, I will find another solution. All right, this is the second day of cutting. I have finished all the blues. You can see them in front of me. I've got five sets of strips with four in each set. I mean, I, I shouldn't use the word strip set because that's going to get confusing with what I'm doing later. But I've got all 20 colors right here. Went pretty well. I mean, the truth will come out if I've had any miscuts when I start assembling them, but they all just visually look pretty good. I've also kept all the fabrics, the, uh, other, the pieces that I didn't cut, 
here in order. Uh, rightfully so, I think, because if I haven't made any mistakes or if I have to add any more fabric, it'll be easier to find the one I want in this pile that's in order. Because I know what the numbers are in here, but I, there's no more numbers on, on this one. The other thing I did, also recommended by Elaine Wright in her, uh, her book, and I'll give you a close-up of this, but I created a fabric map with the, with the trimmings I, made, I got from truing up each fabric to be 90 degrees from the fold. So, well, that worked out really well. I think I'm into about, this about six hours so far of cutting. The reds, oranges, and yellows should go quicker because I'm only making a total of four strip sets and in fact some of them are only one. The yellows, oranges, and reds are now all cut. So that's all the cutting. Spent about two hours on that, therefore making the total cut time around eight hours. I ended up doing for colors four through six, only one strip. Colors seven through 10, two strips. 11 through 14, three strips. And colors 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, four strips. And then the black, which is colors one, two, and three, and color 20, I cut five strips. Well, that was it. That's why it was quicker. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, I did the color map as well with the fabric, the, the, the uh, yellows, oranges, reds, and the blacks. So it came out pretty good, as expected. Quite like it. So begins, as it were, phase three of making the strip sets. I've got all the blue strips to my left, and they're in order, so I'm going to feed off the top the methodology to make a 20 strip set. It's to sew the pairs together. So one and two together, three and four, five and six, and so on. And you take those pairs and put them together, always pressing at any given time towards the even numbered fabric. This is done so that when you stagger the pattern, as each pattern is staggered by one, the, the seams will nest. So you won't get too much in one direction. They'll, they'll nest like, like eagle's wings. <laughs> so having said that, I am going to sew. I have done four strips, set four strips, pairs, but actually three and a half, because I got to do my first on sew. I got cocky. I did one pair of, of uh, strips without pinning and it worked great. Just lined them up ahead of time, pushed them together a bit, made sure they were even. I did it again and wasn't paying attention and the bottom, and they separated like this. Last night I sewed colors one through 10 of the blues. So that's five pairs of colors, sewing all eight strips of each. My average seems to have been for the eight, going through the eight, strips of each color pair about 40 minutes. I think I was into it about three and a half hours or so all told. And what I have done, cool, is figured out how to sew without pinning. It makes things go much quicker, much easier. Carolyn came home last night from something else and uh, I told her, she saw me pinning, she says, what are you doing that for? I said, well, that's working for me. She says, cool, try this. And I tried a different technique, which is just keeping things fed together and it worked great. Okay, update, real fast. First of all, you're noticing a different shirt. Why? Today is the 18th of September, and now I'm into fall slash winter mode as far as shirts go. I did get new fabric to match the one that I ran out of, color number blue three. So, found it online, ordered it, it came in today, a perfect match. I can now, I'm, I can sleep again. Recently, I had to do unsews, as in today, I had to unsew six, six pairs of fabrics. Why? Because it turns out when you, uh, re, uh, you know, load a new bobbin in, if you don't thread it right, the tension's all off. I didn't realize it until I was, I actually felt the seam on the last pair I was sewing and said, oh, that's not right. Sure enough, all, one of the threads was almost on top. So I had to, I had to unsew them. Luckily it was easy because it was so, the tension was so off, 
I would just had to pull the top thread out and then the bottom one came out pretty quick, unsew operation, re-sewed it, all is good. 16 hours later, give or take, and I've sewn all the blue strip sets. Show you on the screen what it looks like in all its glory, the, one of the first ones, but you can see spread out in front of me a little bit here and behind me. So I did the math, as you'd expect, and it turned out to be 137 seams with the fabric, including the pressing, and therefore that's roughly 6,000 inches of sewing. <laughs> so really that's not a great record if it took me 16 hours, but I learned a heck of a lot in the process about particularly keeping the fabrics aligned together as you're sewing. So even if you're doing full throttle sewing, which I was doing, so I'll have to stop now and then to check to make sure things are still good. So I stuck with that. I only had to do, and I checked all my seams afterwards as I was pressing and as I was assembling, I had to do maybe four or five unsews, and none, none of those were width of the entire fabric. They were areas where I had gone a little stray and I wasn't comfortable with how much one of the fabrics did not evenly overlap the other. Because right, the name of the game is to make things even so that when you press it and you lay it out like I have in front of me, it's going to be 90 degrees, it's going to be even, it's going to cut well. And when it all sews together, it's going to line up properly. So I did it. Here's to me. Uh, I just now have to do the yellow, oranges, and reds. What we got today, I have not shown you the specific beer before, although I've done the St. Fuyen brand before because it's the beer of Carnival. This one is a, uh, to say it properly en français, c'est un St. Fuyen Grand Cru. Or to anglicize it, St. Oh, St. Fuyen Grand Cru. This is uh, the primo beer from the brewery, St. Fuyen. Nine and a half percent. There was one Carnival, they were actually serving this and I just about killed people because it's that strong. I mean, you have to definitely slow down. But here we are. It is a wonderful beer. And, oh, oddly enough, check this out. If you can see, I'll zoom in on it with the effects. I've got the St. Fuyen Grand Grand Cru um, shirt that I got at the brewery a few years ago when we visited there. I mean, how could I not? Cheers. <laughs> oh, that is a fine beer. Done. Yellows, oranges, and red, red strip sets. I did the math, it was 42 actual seams with the fabric, times four, to four inches, it's about 1,650 inches of sewing, plus of course all the ironing. It took me somewhere between five and six hours, I wasn't really keeping a close track of it. I had to do a few minor unsews, but again, only when I didn't like how the fabric made it up. The methodology for making sure that the strips don't bow in the middle or bow if you prefer, uh, was you sew in one direction for all the initial pairs. This is what's recommended in the good book. And then when you sew everything else, so it's if you will, it's all the other ones in between the pairs, you sew from the other direction. So when you make the goods to goods, you actually keep the, uh, the top edge with the, uh, of where all the fabric strips are even together and you start at the edge where they don't necessarily line up at the bottom, but you start sewing from that direction. That seemed to work. This looks pretty true. What's behind me looks pretty true. So I'm, I think it, it's a success. This is it. This brings to a close episode three of Quilting with Don. The strip sets are done. With that, I'm going to toast as I, I want to do. This is a McAllen cask strength single malt whiskey. It's wonderful. The long, strong side, but I think I've earned it. Next episode will be creating the Bargello. Public service announcement. Don't don't uh, drink and quilt, or don't drink and sew either, <laughs> but cheers. <laughs>